Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I am Brad, here with Doug. Hey. Remnant 2 is the follow-up to Remnant, which was kind of like a cult classic a few years ago. Mm -hmm. You were way into the first one, and you like went crazy like, Final Fantasy VII Remake crazy for this game <laughs> called Remnant 2. Yes. Uh, when it was announced at something a few years back. So what is this and why should we all be excited <laughs> yeah so remnant remnant is definitely i think that was that was definitely one of those games that it like had like zero expectations going into and just like absolutely loved maybe two or three years ago and then they had announced um remnant 2 and it was like such a huge surprise to me um probably like one of my favorite announcement surprise because like oh this game's just never going to get a sequel it didn't yeah. sell that well and it's like oh no it's actually going to get a next gen sequel it's going to look awesome it's running on unreal 5 and all that stuff and it's like it's remnant one but just better in every way so what what the remnant series is um surface level if you just like watch videos of it it looks like uh well it plays a lot like dark souls but it's more like a third person shooter so imagine you're yeah. playing dark souls but you're playing with resident evil controls and that sort of action yeah. um but the kind of other unique twist on it is that it really, really relies on randomization for a lot of things. So um, if you and I played this game, um, the plot, the main plot would be the same. But as you're going to different levels, the plot within those levels might be different. The bosses that you, we might encounter might be different. And then there's some like sort of like kind of bespoke, bespoke handcrafted areas that might be different as well. Um, so, so that's kind of like, yeah. Does that lead to, I guess, whenever I hear randomization, I get worried. Yes, you should be. <laughs> so, so I guess in my mind, does that lead yeah. to this kind of feeling of like, this isn't quite the best version or the best experience? Do you ever get that where you're like, ugh, like I really like somebody else. I saw somebody on Twitter posted this video of the X boss and I got a mm -hmm. boss instead. And man, that boss looked way cooler. Or do you eventually come to all the bosses? Like, cause I feel like sometimes it's a randomization of order or is it randomization of just like you get these six out of the 12 possibilities, it, it, oh, man, <laughs> I, so I will definitely get into that just high level with how I feel about this game. I love remnant one. This is a K a improvement on remnant one in every single way. I enjoyed it way less because the randomization stuff just killed it for me. Um, uh. And so with some of the randomization stuff, you had like, a, so you had like a few questions there. Um, <laughs> so, so one, okay, let's say, so the bosses, so the bosses, um, like, so there's going to be, I guess, light spoilers for how many levels are on this game. There's three sort of like main levels that you go to. Yep. Um, each of those levels will have kind of like a grab bag of bosses that'll pull from to kind of create your, um, to create your level so um again kind of have to try to be vague with some of this stuff so the main overarching plot of the game is you just need to go to these levels and quote unquote defeat powerful beasts so okay. um so the level that you go to like whatever the main powerful beast is like the main boss the plot will kind of dictate so um i was playing this one sort of elf thing and you have to kill this sort of like elf kingy sort of character um, so the entire plot for that elf world was centered on this like elf king character. Yeah, I I'll explain a little bit later, but I was I, I was essentially able to re-roll that area after I had beaten it just to see because I want to see like okay how random is this? Yeah, and then it turned out that in that elf world now it was a different all powerful character. The plot line was completely different, and then Ooh. I ran into like these like three new areas I just like never seen before, which was cool and like. In practice, this all sounds really cool, um, and I think it's like almost there because I actually think that aspect of what I described is cool. Like, I think it's kind of neat getting a grab bag of bosses when you go in because, like, you're you probably fight like two or three bosses, maybe more, in an individual level. So it's cool, yep. like having a, having a potential of like maybe eight different bosses. And you only get to play three of them, so like that's pretty cool. Um, I think actually, I thought actually playing that that level with a different narrative was also really cool. But kind of what you were saying before, it's like, well, if you're doing this randomization, is there clearly a better version? Yeah. And when I had re-rolled that area, the first time I played it, I didn't like it very much. And when I re-rolled it and played it, and the whole thing centered on a different powerful character, it was like, actually, this was way more interesting. And I was way more into this, even knowing kind of like the level design and stuff. I was yep. like, actually, this plot was much better, which does make you kind of think like, so which made me think it's like, okay, 
because I didn't really super enjoy this game. But when I replayed that is one there... level, it's like, actually, you know, would my entire is opinion there a of this game, a version of this game that actually I could have potentially rolled that I would have enjoyed a lot more. Um, so with that, is this is this a short game? Like, is is the intention of like like and like a roguelike where the intention mm-hmm. is you're gonna play this like four or five times? So yeah, we're gonna make this random because. We know you're going to get to this area three different times. We know you're going to go back to it. Is there like backtracking? Are you supposed to play it a couple times? Or is this like a long game and it's just like, nope, that was your thing. If you want to see more, go through the 30 hours again. Yeah. So, so okay. So, like when, when I beat the game the first time, let's say I had just gone through, I've basically gone through all three levels, beat the game. That was 20 hours. Um, Jeez. What they let you, yeah, so it's not a short game. And each of those levels, like if you split 20 hours over three levels, those are like pretty long yeah, levels. Yeah, six and a half, seven hours. Yeah. Um, there's some other stuff mixed in, so so the math doesn't like quite span out, pan out exactly like that. But they're still probably pretty long levels. Um, but what they do have, they have this kind of cool thing called like an adventure mode um, that you can access from from your same character. It'll basically like let you re-roll like one area and kind of go like on a side yeah, mission. Yeah. So, um, so like when I beat the game, I re-rolled quote unquote my like my one elf world in my main game if i go to that elf world it'll be the same one i did the first time but in the sort of side thing it lets you go on adventures so you can like re-roll just certain areas got it so the but, potential is there for you to see all of this if you're interested in seeing what the other potential things are no exactly and when i re-rolled that area it was really cool because they had changed the main powerful boss but two of the sub bosses i had already beaten yeah. so it was like like you have to kind of keep re-rolling to finally see everything when i was like and that to the point where i was like well when i re-roll this level this powerful character was the more interesting one and this boss was more interesting here it's like well why why even have that less interesting boss at all yeah. um and and that's kind of what i can and like in like some like the more like bespoke areas like so in the, when you're like traveling within areas like there's like in the second time i went to this like really cool insane asylum thing that like the whole story was based around and it was like it was actually like it actually changed the tone of it where it's like a much spookier level um and i was just like this is just the better i and it sounds bad but it's like this is just the better idea so why are we yeah. doing any other idea than this like i would much rather and the, the, actually the problem i really had with the randomization is because the world is really really cool it is really, really steeped in lore um, that kind of ask you to take it seriously. So like each of those three worlds, so if they have if they have a different powerful character every time, you're seeing like different pieces of that world story, like when you go through it again and again, which is really cool. Um, but because of the randomization of the actual level design, you have these sort of like, I'll, I'll just take the asylum for example. So there's in this level, I went to an asylum and a clock tower. Those two areas, very specifically the Asylum and Clock Tower, were really, really cool and really, really well designed. But what they do is essentially randomize the hallways to get there. Mm-hmm. So a hallway can be, in that one, it's kind of like a um, sort of like a bloodborne town. Um, but because they randomize the way you get there, it doesn't make sense for a town. Like it just like in your head, oh. it's it's pieces of a town put together, but it doesn't really make sense as a town. Um, the one that was really, really bad is that there's um, sort of this castle area and then the castle hallways are randomized. So it just, it feels like this like insane castle design that makes no sense that just full of hallways everywhere. So you're just constantly relying on your mini map to get anywhere. So it's like, it's asking you to take this world seriously, but all you see is the gameplay. Like you, yeah. you like you don't, and like, it did, like the world itself doesn't make sense. So it's hard to take that lore seriously when the when the world itself is just like this is just a dungeon guys <laughs> um which is really disappointing because i think i think like i paid to play a little bit diablo 4 and i felt like diablo 4 did a much better job where the dungeon areas kind of were like a separate thing like the main area was not super randomized yep. and then you have like these sort of like dungeon the side thing but in this game like everything is like randomized except for maybe your main hub area um, but just because everything is randomized, it just felt like you were just constantly just like, it was just butting heads because it also looks really good. Um, the monster design is like incredible and it's just like a world like I want to like learn more about and I, I hate, yeah. I'm going to bring up souls cause I have to bring up souls. Souls at least feels like things are purposeful and they're not always just serving the character and the gameplay. It's like the reason this castle's here is because of X, Y, Z plot wise and character wise. Yeah. And this one, like 
that doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter why this asylum is here and this clock tower is here. It was just, we just randomly chose from our grab bag of locations to get the asylum and the, at the clock tower. And then we randomly made hallways to them. And yep, it just, it's, yeah, yeah. So outside of that. Yeah. Because it sounded like, again, like overall net positive on this. So yeah. where wh- where are the the positives come in then? A gameplay, overall story. You've kind of mentioned a couple times. Like what what are the positive things here? Like what's yeah. what's, what's the step up from Remnant? So the step. So again, it's like I didn't enjoy this game as much as Remnant because I felt like that. Because I felt like oh, I know okay. it's, I know we're trying to get positive, but um, <laughs> I got I got to finish my thing. Like the reason I thought is because like I felt like there was these aspects that were weak in Remnant and that Remnant One did really strong. And I felt what they did is they really improved on the strong aspects. Like the gameplay feels really good. Nice. Um, the weapons are really really cool. Um, the care the creature designs are incredible. Um, like really really good creature yeah. designs. Really cool attacks um, from them. Um, which I think is like always really important in like any sort of game like this. Mm-hmm. Um, so that stuff's really, really good. And then it feels like the weaker aspect to me is always the randomization stuff, which they just kind of like they improved upon by just making it more random, which which really hurt. But it's just like the immediate and the reason I did go through this game is because the immediate gameplay is really cool. Um, just playing a third person souls game is really fun. Um, the boss battles are incredible. They're really, really cool. Um, some of the aspects I like from like, that were carried over from the first game is that all of your guns can have like a, a super kind of put on them, like an alternate fire. So for example, like the first alternate fire you get is like you have a, um, you can get, you can turn your bullets into fire for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can equip that to any gun. So if you have your shotgun, it's like your shotgun can now fire, fire bolts for a little yep. bit or your, or your pistol. Um, and the thing that's really cool with that sort of system is is that every time you kill a boss, you'll either get a new gun related to the boss or you'll get a um, power associated with that boss, like a a gun modification. So um, I killed one boss and it had this super annoying attack. But now (laughs) the thing you get from killing the boss is you get their super annoying attack to now use on enemies, which is really fun. That's fun. Badoo. If you like what you've heard so far, please subscribe to our channel for more discussion-based reviews like this. Badoo. Um, some of the other really cool things, that I, the one thing I really liked they did add was this uh, class system that was really cool. Um, when you start the game, you pick a class. Um, the one I just picked, like, a heavy guy who has a cool big sword. And when you die, you get, like, one re- resurrection. Um, and then you get these, like, you get these cool powers associated with it. It's kind of like, I guess, like, not like Final Fantasy classes, but more like Diablo classes where you get kind of like these cool yeah. new skills to use. And yeah. um, your character is like that character is more melee focus and more about you get like bonuses for being up close and stuff and it's really really cool and then halfway through the game you can then add another class and it's not like oh you swapped classes no you actually get two classes um at the same time so you get the bonus so you get the benefits of that um so it's really really cool like there's there's one that's like a healer which is pretty standard there's one where it's a guy with a dog there's one that's like just you're really good at shooting one is like you're really good at getting people's faces there's one that's like there's a few that are hidden in the game so you have to hit like these like weird randomization things that are kind of cool and then it's like if you hit this weird thing that's the that's the one thing i do like about randomization games is because they can do like a 100 chance of this happening or just a rare chance of this happening and then it gives you the opportunity to get like additional um sort of like secret um yeah whatever classes so that was like that was really cool and i think that was like an amazing amazing addition and you know i'm gonna go negative for a second the one thing (laughs) i think they really stumbled on in that aspect is um the the game has way too many things to tinker with and i don't know what you would describe this as but like do you like like the plus one percentage bonus stuff the overly rpg rpg yes yes and the thing is i really like the first one because it actually didn't have a lot of that stuff and it feels like this one like added some additional stuff so i actually went (laughs) i actually went into like the menu to figure out exactly how many different things there are it's like okay so you have armor pretty standard you have perks which are stat bonuses that are specific to your class yep you have the weapon modifiers, which are not the special attacks. It's actually this additional modifier that's like, mm-hmm. if you if you spend your gun, it'll automatically reload. Or if you do this, it'll do that. Then you also have amulets, which are an additional sort of change. You have relic fragments. And these <laughs> things change things by plus or minus 1%. And yeah. then finally, you have traits. <laughs> and what <laughs> traits are, it's... Um, each class you start with one so for example like if you're like the heavy class 
it there's one that like it lets you carry more heavy armor or something like that and it levels up as your character levels up so it's like yeah. as my character gets level 10 i can get heavier and heavier armor with no problem but you earn additional ones of these i think i had around 15 different types and all of those can be leveled up separately yeah. and it's just like what the ah and i think it kind of makes sense in games where they're not where there's um where it's not as skill based but because yeah. this is so skill based like i don't care about any of that stuff just as long as my gun shoots good so well, it's like they add all these like just infinite ways of like adjusting your character and tinkering and the thing is like i wouldn't actually wouldn't mind anything these things if they were like three levels like 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent. yeah but some of these things you're leveling up are like literally by percentage points like one percent two percent three percent it's like i'm not noticing these changes guys <laughs> like how many times do i have to up, upgrade this thing till i feel it and it has a lot of that stuff and this is like one of those things where it's like we're putting so much stuff into Remnant 2. And it's like, yeah. yes, that is awesome. Your bosses are really cool. You did amazing things with your new creature designs. I actually, the new worlds, I think all did were really cool. They always had these like kind of really cool halfway twist thing that they did with them. Um, um, but it, they also felt like, oh, now we should blow out the RPG stuff. It's like, actually, your game was doing much better by not blowing out the, JR, the, the RPG stuff. It was like, well, that's that was kind of what made your game unique was that you didn't do that. And coming off of Final Fantasy 16, too, where it's like, we're going to pare this down to make this yes. a skill-focused game, and we're going to lose a little bit of that. And it's going, no, 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 we're going to skill-focused game, we're going to embrace that. I think it's two very different mindsets of what you're going into. And, again, a different thing, but that's always kind of my issue with, like, Borderlands and that kind of thing, where it's like, oh, yeah, your gun has 48 power, now it has 49 power. And it's like, yes. tell me, t give me... Let me know when it's forty more. <laughs> Let me know when I go from forty eight to eighty eight, and then we'll then then I'll tinker with yeah. this. But it's just I, I get it because that stuff drives me crazy, and that was one of the perks in my mind of Final Fantasy sixteen was it's I still felt I felt my character growing, I felt the new abilities, I felt everything, but yeah. I didn't have to sit there and go, oh look, my intuition went up plus one. I must be slightly stronger right now. Yeah, and the thing the thing I thought Final Fantasy 16 did really good that this game, the Remnant 1 did, is like Final Fantasy 16 was picking from a limited tool. Like you have a very extensive toolbox, but you yep. only use a certain amount of tools at a time, which is really cool and super fun. And Remnant 1 did really, really good job at that. Mm -hmm. um, and then for some, and it still kind of does that in this one. That's why I was like, the guns have like some like special modifiers yeah. you can add to them, which is cool, like big, powerful attacks. That stuff is cool, but just like adding all this like, I'm going to just call Nat's ass detail with stuff that like, <laughs> just, I guess, I get, and that it's like, well, it's for those people who want to play the game again and again. It's like, well, you got me for 20 hours, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't have 90, I don't have 90 don't hours have... for you, Remnant 2. I'm sorry. I got yeah, one playthrough and, and we're going to enjoy it. And yeah. And, and like, I feel like there's like a Remnant 3, like to, to me. And that's the thing. It's like, I just don't know, like if the, if, and I'm really curious, like other people who play Remnant and really love the series is like, is that randomization the reason you come to this game while to me it's like oh actually this is the major weakness of the game um, yeah and that's kind of I mean, ultimately where i landed yeah and, and that's kind of the thing is you don't know where that came from because i feel like remnant one kind of came out of nowhere just it was mm -hmm. kind of that like oh like enough people like this i guess but i don't feel like there was like this huge like oh remnant has the best blank it was just, no it was a pretty yeah. cool game to check out and and i feel like it's kind of that okay did we take it, it almost sounds like a did we take the long, wrong lesson from our success type of situation yes. of yeah. we thought people like this, but people didn't. But it's interesting to me because I feel like Remnant 2 is getting a much bigger push. I feel like I've seen much more talk of Remnant 2 than I ever did of Remnant 1. So yeah, because it's, it, a really it's good, interesting. It's, it's a really because it's a really good game like it's like just like i think people who played remnant 1 will love remnant 2 i think if you've never played remnant 4 remnant 2 is an awesome game me being this weirdly dug specific <laughs> shit that bugs me did not enjoy it as much because of that but I'll, I'll bet i'll bet there's people out there like everything they did was amazing this is so much better than the first game and to me it's just like you went too far you dial you just dialed like a little bit in things that i don't particularly enjoy but others might so yeah yeah i mean that's what you gotta look at is which each person likes their own thing. Mm -hmm. You didn't do the right one for me. Sorry, go listen to somebody else. They probably loved it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and I would still recommend it to like anybody. Really, there you go. We are Workforce Gaming. We try and get new videos out every Monday. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to our channel, and we will see you later. Bye. <laughs>